petition refusing the grant of divorce on the ground of cruelty. Lord, I will just inform that our client is 73 years old and fighting this litigation for 22 years. Classic example, Lord, why this honorable, and according to us, the wife is already remarried, still contesting this respect. That's right. Marriage is not merely between two individuals. It's also between two families coming together. There are many people involved in the question of marriage, not when the disputes arise. It is actually the families which are affected. Nobody is talking about the mental health of the child and the family members in the, in the long definition of rape by saying that you know, a rape, whether it is committed even by a husband for a girl who is between 15 to 18. Can, can be still considered as a rape, though legislation, though that part of the legislation was read out and then it was removed, Lord. Lord, I have filed the written submissions. Okay. Lord, you can kindly respond take the the note of that. Yes, Mr. Savla is also. This is a specially petition, not all other matters are transit petitions. Mine is arising out of a specially petition, uh, uh, out of a high court judgment, Lord, and it's a specially petition refusing the grant of divorce on the ground of cruelty. Lord, I'll just inform that our client is 73 years old and fighting this litigation for 22 years. Classic example, you know, why this honorable, and according to us, the wife is already remarried, still contesting this respect. That's what we filed a vote case. Yes, she's remarried, we filed a voter list, they may be disputing it. Nevertheless, you know, mm -hmm. I'm filing, I have filed it along with the SLP as well, you know, I'm just informing, we are not going to merit for the matter today because your logics are actually determining only the questions of law. Lord, uh, I am not addressing the first issue or the second issue. I am only addressing your logics on the third issue. Lord. However, Lord, from where Mr. Giri left Lord, on the question of mutual consent, whether your logics were contemplating about the giving powers to the trial court about dispensing with the six months, Lord, then where Mr. Giri was saying well, it can be only exercised by this honorable court. Anyway, Lord, it will become uh, redundant because by the time it comes here, unless the trial court is clothed with that power of dispensing with the six months Lord. by the time it travels many of them may not even be able to travel this far Lord. by the time it travels to this honorable court it is more than six years at least not because it goes from stage to the stage so therefore the question of only power being exercised by this honorable court and 13b by dispensing with may not be you not know, appropriate only to decide about this honorable court but nevertheless that issue not i'm not addressing i'm just pointing out this could be a difficulty in doing that and just two things you know your lordships had said in Ashok Hura, which actually resulted in, while talking about 142 minutes, your lordship in fact clothed this honorable court with the power of curative jurisdiction as well, which arose from the Rupa Ashok Hura, which is from the Ashok Hura judgment, which was read out you know, in the morning. What was held was a mutual consent was withdrawn later, which resulted in Ash Rupa's judgment, where this honorable court has held that you, you had the power of even opening a review of a matter you not know, under 32 and this you not know, read with all these powers which is granted this honorable court you can even reopen a matter which is closed in a review unless there are new grounds which are not raised which are already raised in the review which a certificate is given by a senior advocate so that is also a consequential effect of powers of this honorable court you not know, how this honorable court can extend its powers you not know, also you not know, to buttress the point which one of miss jaising's points which i had also noted is that you not know, the parents patria jurisdiction of this honorable court you know, your lordships are not even like your lordship just now said marriage is not merely between two individuals it's also between two families coming together there are many people involved in the question of marriage not when the disputes arise it is actually the families which are affected nobody is talking about the mental health of the child and the family members you know, in, the, in the long run families are affected but families also intervene intervene no. and that, but subsequently what happens the product of marriage the child will not, most of the circumstances, most of the cases, there is a child. That is always so. Yes, so therefore, in the interest of the child also, your lordship has gone to the extent of saying, you know, in a case where twins were there, and they were inseparable twins, where there was a PAL brought to this honorable court, parents were refusing to separate the twins, you know, of course there was no, medical board was ordered here, parents did not advise, did not go in favor of that. Some good Samaritan approached this honorable court under 32, and it's a reported judgment, Lord, in 2013. This honorable court would say, if even if the parents are opposing, if it comes to the welfare of the child, this court in its parents' patria jurisdiction, Lord, will go to the extent of passing such directions. So I am inviting, commend this, this honorable court, Lord, under 142, your lordship will combine the jurisdiction of parents' patria as well, Lord, while exercising 
this uh, jurisdiction under 142 to dissolve a marriage and on the ground of irretrievable breakdown please take that into consideration that the child's interest and the family's interest as well is concerned as a parent's patriarchy will not and thirdly you know, your, that your slp is tagged with this it, it got tagged me lord actually it got tagged it got tagged in a way factory also we have to deal with it or not Sorry, it may go back to division bench. It may have to, my lord. In fact, not just let me uh, bring this yes. the notice of this honourable court. Not it is from uh, Bombay High Court. Not Justice Oka is also a party to the imputed judgment. Where Justice Oka would say, complete uh, my next submission. The next submission is that as your lordship had also observed, society has evolved. But the law, my lord, has not been able to catch up with the level of, my lord, the advancement that has taken place today. In fact, today, my lords, the society is contemplating a same-sex marriage. The society has already gone into living partner relationship, which is recognized in terms of law. But, my lord, whatever this honourable court has been able to travel farther and faster than the legislation, sometimes, my lord, like in the case of Vishaka, your lord chief passed the direction in 1997 for the for taking care of of sexual uh, harassment in workplaces not in past certain directions till the legislation come into place but it took that 16 years for the legislation to come into place you know so therefore i'm only saying it's something save life foundation where good samaritan notifications were in place which were not coming into operation this honorable court has gone a step further and then passed certain directions you know now i am inviting a lot of to go through the provision 13b mutual consent in 142, while exercising this jurisdiction, my lord, your lordship will be only furthering the grounds which are already enumerated is my humble submission because 13 contemplates certain grounds. My lord, 1A of 13 contemplates judicial separation for one year and then, my lord, restitution of conjugal rights, which when it is decreed and not effected for one year, it gives rise to a right to go back to the court for divorce. My lord, by the time when they come here, after a restitution of conjugal decree and they keep waiting it's more than one year it's at least may not three to four years of waiting would we be addressing uh, advising them to again go back and then say there is a restitution of conjugal rights decree against you for 15 years which is pending no now you go and file a fresh divorce petition Lord, is it not in complete justice that uh, your lordship will be exercising the power under 142 so these are circumstances where Lord, your lordship can very well read 13b mutual consent which says without any ground whatsoever Two people can go to the court and then say we have got irreconcilable differences. We want to part ways. So why not you know, this irretrievable breakdown can be extended to other grounds which are enumerated in section 13 as well. The irretrievable cannot be a ground as such, you Lord. Know, I agree. But when you read as such grounds of cruelty, decision or whatever instances which has had taken place over a period of time, that as a bundle you know, forms a ground of irretrievable breakdown, which your Lordship will you not know, uh, then take that into consideration while exercising powers under 142 my lord your lordship may kindly see uh, this court my lord has gone to the extent of even my lord reading down the definition of rape by saying that you know that a rape whether it is committed even by a husband for a girl who is between 15 to 18 can can be still considered as a rape though legislation though that part of the legislation was read down and then it was removed my lord we, by, while the, though the court says we are not legislating in that judgment, independent thought, not Justice Lokur would write that though we are not, Justice Deepak Gupta and Justice Lokur would write, you know, though they are, we are not legislating, but this is actually amounting to reading it along with the POXO Act so that to make it workable, two legislations are workable. Similarly, my lords, your lordship will exercise your lordship's powers to make this, you know, the uh, what the 1976 amendment contemplated is to make divorce uh, liberalized, which they didn't pursue thereafter. My Lord, after 76, there is a complete standstill. Though there is, uh, though the two law commission reports are there, though there is an amendment bill which never saw the light of the day. There were uh, joint uh, parliamentary standing committee reports, my Lord, that not just nothing has been followed. So all that is there. So nevertheless, my Lord, your lordships can read all these into the grounds of the divorce and my Lord 13b as well. And kindly take that also the parents' petri as well. Lord, today, your Lordship will also notice and take judicial notice of the fact, like Ms. Daisin also said, Lord, when we talk to youth about marriage, they say it's a noose around the neck and there is no escape route when there is a problem. So therefore, they take to the root of the, the institution of marriage, which we are all saying that we are wanting to protect, is not getting protected only because not certain elbow rooms, like they call it, you know, it's a fabric 
of the uh, marriage is a, a fabric of the ma institution. Uh, marriage is a great institution, which is a fabric of the society. Not that fabric doesn't need always triple five soap. You know, it also needs a little comforter once in a while. So therefore, Lord, I think it has to be, Lord, attended to. And your lordships are, is, are clothed with ample powers under 142. Lord, there are certain judgments which were not read out, which I have put in my compilation, Lord. Just one, one judgment which is very recent, which is even said to the level of saying that, you know, Though there is no cruelty made out, still only on 142, we are exercising uh, this irretrievable breakdown is there in the marriage, so we are exercising 142. That we have said it will be exercised. In Rajendra and Minot, it said over and above that, it said there is, and your logic may kindly see that uh, tag number three of, sorry, it's four, four of my compilation. Four. Yes. Kindly see this, Minot. Tag number four. The last, the last few paras would very definitely say that, you know, it, it follows, you know, your logic judgment in Shiva Shankaran, and then it's in para 35, it would say that, you know, that uh, the judgment is followed. And para 33 is the, but 33, you know. They affirm the judgment, but exercise the party. Yes, ma'am. Para 33 is what they, uh, they are exercising article 142. However, you know, the, they say that para 29, they are saying there is no merit at all and therefore there is no uh, argument that they don't sustain. They say there is no cruelty and every marriage cannot be on that ground, it can't be. Nevertheless, they find there is a subsequent match. That is this Rajendra and Lord. And judgment is on that marital rape the recent judgment i think it is or today it's pronounced today is that you know this honorable court says in fact you know, uh, for uh, a girl who wants to abort in an unmarried relationship should actually extend they have interpreted it to me it should extend to the married relationship as well where there can be a marital rape the right to abortion should be permitted to be extended. so therefore the extent of powers of this honorable court to mold the relief and to suit the circumstances and to suit the society's development. Yes, Lord. today you know, it's pronounced, we'll pass it on to the court. We'll pass it on. Lord, so Deeply that, obliged. It's a full perspective, Lord. Is there a statutory bar? And Is just there... one thing, uh, from case to case, it can be exercised. Yes, Lord, you are opposing her in her matter, correct? Lord, only on the legal issue. You are saying it should not be granted. Uh, I am saying that Independent of the grounds, it can't be granted. Can't be granted. So that is what so the irritable breakdown also will have to fit it in one of the grounds. And there is a bar under the Hindu under the Family Act, you know, the Hindu Marriage Act. Just point out according to me why there is a bar. Yeah. That this court, if there is an express bar, then this court can't ground on the ground of breakdown of marriage beyond repair. Yes. If there is an express bar. And I would read section 23 as an express bar. So that means just from two lines of section. Yes. For a in proceedings 23.1 in any proceeding under this act whether defendant or not or non travels also can get a judgment you have to prove your case, whether defendant or not if the court is satisfied that any of the grounds for, set for granting relief exists for grounds which are mentioned in the section 13 if they exist then only you can grant that is one then there is another provision Lord Chief will see me not section 23 1 E. There is no other legal ground why relief should not be granted, then and in such a case, but not otherwise. So there is a negative aspect also. So not otherwise you can't grant. And Maloch, in my respectful submission, if you're granting on the ground under Article 132, kindly fit into the grounds of cruelty or any other grounds which are already enumerated under Section 13. And what Mr. Giri pointed out one judgment, not following that judgment. Only giving a citation, it's in my written note also. 2013, volume 5, SCC, page 2 to 6. This court held that if for any reason, if a party is not agreeing for a mutual for a divorce, then in exercise of mental cruelty, it can be granted on the ground of mental cruelty. It's one line, you know, which I wanted to say is the consent of a party who is not consenting has to be inferred by their conduct and it should be read into it. 
Yes. 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 Yes.